हेलो स्टूडेंट्स टुडे वी विल लर्न अबाउट वाल्व टाइमिंग डायग्राम ऑफ एन एस आई इंजिन वाल्व टाइमिंग डायग्राम इज इन रिगार्ड्स दैट व्हेन डज द इनलेट एंड आउटलेट वाल्व ऑफ एन एस आई इंजिन प्रैक्टिकली ओपन्स ओके मींस इन द रियल केस व्हेन एक्चुअली द एस आई इंजिन रन इन दैट केस व्हेन डज द इनलेट वाल्व एंड आउटलेट वाल्व ओपन फर्स्ट ऑफ ऑल वी विल टेक the ideal case this is the schematic diagram of an si engine you can see that there is a cylinder that there is a piston connecting rod flywheel and this is the crankshaft okay and this is the inlet valve blue colored and this is the outlet valve that is red colored okay so i am talking about the ideal case first of all means ideally when does the inlet valve and outlet valve shell open okay see the inlet valve ideally must open exactly at the beginning of suction stroke okay means when the suction stroke just starts when the piston is at tdc we know this thing that piston reciprocates between the top dead center and the bottom dead center so when the suction stroke just starts when the piston is at tdc at the same time the inlet valve must open and it must remain open until the entire suction stroke ends means here when the piston reaches the bottom dead center at the same time the inlet valve must be closed okay so one thing that inlet valve must open at the beginning of suction stroke and must close at the end of suction stroke so this is the ideal case okay so in ideal case in case si engine is running then inlet valve must open exactly at the beginning of suction stroke and must close exactly at the end of suction stroke now next is we know that when the suction ends then the next stroke is the compression stroke in the compression stroke both the valves are closed and then there is the uh, a spark is introduced to the mixture okay and the next stroke is the working stroke okay so in working stroke the piston moves from tdc to bdc back now outlet valve ideally must open exactly at the end of working stroke okay when the working stroke just end and it is the beginning of exhaust stroke uh, when the working stroke ends then it is the beginning of exhaust stroke so we can say that ideally the outlet valve must open exactly at the end of working stroke or the beginning of exhaust stroke and it must remain open until the outlet stroke or exhaust stroke ends so once more ideally the outlet valve must open at the end of working stroke or the beginning of exhaust stroke and it must remain open until the entire exhaust stroke ends so we have learned over here that when does the inlet and outlet valve open ideally inlet valve must open ideally at the beginning of suction stroke and must close at the end of suction stroke and outlet valve must open at the end of working stroke or the beginning of exhaust stroke and must close at the end of exhaust stroke now in practical case when the actual engine runs then the scene is something different let's see let's see that see this is the schematic diagram again of an si engine you can see there is a piston which is reciprocating inside the cylinder there are these, these are the two extremities top dead center bottom dead center and these are the two walls there is a spark plug and over here i am just showing the crankshaft okay and crankshaft is having a pointer with it means in case crankshaft is rotating this pointer is also rotating with the crankshaft to show that how many degrees of displacement is happening with the crankshaft now what happens ideally we have learned that inlet valve must open at the beginning of suction stroke but in practical case the inlet valve starts opening few degrees before the exhaust stroke ends we know this thing just after exhaust stroke there is inlet stroke or suction stroke so exhaust stroke is ending but few degrees before the inlet valve starts opening it doesn't opens exactly at tdc means in practical case the inlet valve doesn't opens exactly at the beginning of suction stroke it starts opening few degrees before the end of exhaust stroke you can see few degrees before ivo means inlet valve opens now what is the reason behind this thing the reason is that practically the valve when lifts up from its seat valve rests over its valve seat so to lift up completely from its valve seat it takes some time okay so we have to start the opening of this valve few degrees before the 
top dead center so that when the piston exactly reaches the top dead center the valve becomes fully open so that suction can happen properly in case valve is not fully um, uh, lift up from its seat in that case uh, the piston will find it hard to pull the charge inside okay so once again that inlet valve starts opening few degrees before the top dead center or few degrees the start of actual suction the reason is that it needs some time for a valve to lift up completely from its seat so you can see that as soon as the exhaust stroke fully ends and piston reaches the tdc the inlet valve becomes fully open now next is suction you can see half away the suction is happening and ultimately suction ends and the piston reaches the bottom dead center you can see the pointer is at bottom dead center okay but still the inlet valve is open ideally the inlet valve must close exactly at the end of suction stroke but you can see over here the inlet valve is still open means ideally the inlet valve must close exactly at the end of suction stroke it is still open and it remains open few degrees after the bottom dead center you can see exactly at the bottom dead center it is not closed it but remains open few degrees ahead the bottom dead center why it is so it could be understood by the following analogy you can see that there is a trolley of some mass it is having a elastic band with it and at the end of band there is a loop this trolley is having small wheels over which it can roll okay suppose this elastic band is suddenly pulled what would happen first of all this elastic band would expand because it is expandable it is elastic band and then the trolley will start moving means the pull is given to this loop to right hand side at the same time the trolley is not moving but first of all it has been expanded and then the trolley starts moving the same thing is there with a piston cylinder system suppose this is a cylinder and there is a piston in it and there is a hole in it suppose the piston is pulled toward left hand side at a sudden with a very fast speed so what would happen the rate by which the piston is creating void inside the cylinder with the same rate the air would not be pulled inside the reason is same like that of the elastic band the air is expandable we know this thing that gases and vapors are expandable and compressible too therefore in case the piston is moved toward left hand side with very fast speed with the same speed the air would not go inside so you can see that pist piston is pulled and it takes some more time so that the entire cylinder may fetch up fully with air so same thing happens with the SI engine also since when piston moves in the inside the cylinder then it moves with very fast speed okay so what happens that piston when suction stroke happens then piston reaches the bottom dead center with a very fast fast speed so at the same time the entire cylinder is not fetched up with fresh charge so to give it some time so that the cylinder may pull the required amount of charge inside and fully fill up with charge so this much sacrifice is to be given however we are shortening the amount of volume which is to be sucked inside but in case the inlet valve is closed exactly when the piston reaches the bottom dead center then some amount of vacuum would remain inside the cylinder which is unwanted okay so since the air is expandable this is the reason that the inlet valve is kept open ahead few degrees of the bottom dead center so what we see that inlet valve is starts opening few degrees before the top dead center we have already talked about the reason is that to completely lift up from its seat the valve lifts up from its seat it needs need some time so we have to start it opening few degrees before the top dead center and it remains open few degrees ahead the bottom dead center the reason is that piston moves with a very fast speed so the rate by which it is creating void inside the cylinder with the same rate the charge is not going inside so to give the charge some time so that the cylinder may properly fill up with the required amount of charge the, the inlet valve remains open few degrees ahead the bottom dead center now we know this thing that when the suction is 
ends then the next stroke is the compression stroke in the compression stroke both the walls remain closed then there is working stroke okay now what happens that ideally the outlet valve must open at the end of working stroke means exactly at the end of working stroke but you can see over here that evo that exhaust wall is started opening few degrees before the bottom dead center you can see over here few degrees before it has started opening the reason is again same as that of inlet wall because to fully lift up from its seat the wall needs some time so we have to start it open few degrees before the bottom dead center now when the piston reaches the bottom dead center then you can see the outlet valve is now fully open now the pist uh, for the piston it's become easy to push the entire burn charge out of the cylinder so next is you can see this is half away exhaust stroke now ultimately when the piston reaches the tdc still you can see that outlet valve is open ideally the outlet valve must close exactly at the end of exhaust stroke but you can see that it is still in open condition and it is closed few degrees ahead that top dead center you see that outlet valve doesn't closes exactly at the end of exhaust stroke but it is closed few degrees ahead the top dead center you can see few degree movement ahead the top dead center is there so what is the reason same suppose inside a piston cylinder system there is some all, uh, air content in it okay and there is a hole now in case the piston is moved to a right hand side with a very fast speed then the rate by which it is trying to push the air to go out of the system with the same rate the air would not go out because same as like that of air is expandable the air is compressible too so first of all it would remain inside the piston cylinder system for a while for a short while it would remain inside in compressed form and later later on the entire air would come out as per how much the piston has been displaced so same thing would happen over here that however the piston is trying to push out the exhaust gases out of the cylinder okay in the exhaust stroke the piston is trying to push out the exhaust gases out of the cylinder but since the piston is moving with very fast speed so the entire air the entire exhaust gases burn gases would not come out with the same rate by which piston is trying to push it out so to give some time it remains open few degrees ahead the top dead center so one thing we can observe over here that we know this thing that inlet valve opens few degrees before the end of exhaust stroke okay and we know this thing that what is the reason the reasons i have already told about this thing similarly the exhaust valve remains open few degrees ahead the end of exhaust stroke the inlet valve starts opening few degrees before the end of exhaust stroke and the exhaust valve remains open few degrees ahead the end of exhaust stroke it means what that both the valves remains open simultaneously for a short while so this period in which both the valves inlet valve and outlet valve remains open for a small duration for a small time is called as period of overlap okay so hope you would have understood the small story of the valve timing diagram of an si engine this is an indicative narration to make you understand in regards of opening and closing of inlet and outlet valve of an si engine thank you